Hello and welcome back to Compiler Programming. So we, in the last video we took a quick look at the Windows uh, executable format and all the stuff that we will need to implement to make it work. And today what I wanted to do is to create a sort of a reference executable because if we get back to uh, this uh, file Elizer and look again at uh, how it looks like then current executable that we have it actually has a lot of the stuff that we don't need so it has a lot of the sections it has a lot of imports and it in general it's it's quite big like right uh, you see the here there is like almost 500 kilobytes of stuff um, some of which is debug information a lot of it is unoptimized code and so on and so forth like if we were to uh create executables ourselves it would be really nice if we can have like sort of a minimal uh, example that we can easily digest and understand and uh, the best way would probably be to um, to create one in directly in assembly uh, but I think we can start with one in C so you can sort of get a better feel at how application actually starts and how all of how all of these is tying together with what you're writing in C. Okay, so we'll start with um, <clears throat> just uh, creating a C file, which we'll call uh, something like minimal, and we'll create another um, sort of another one of these that will compile it. But we will do very different flags from what we did before. I will leave uh, w all and because uh, I actually want all the weird stuff to be reported to us, but I will remove majority of uh, <clears throat> other things and then we will uh, go to the documentation and slowly add them in so you also know what all of these flags actually mean. Um, I will remove this uh, slash d unicode stuff as well. It is not going to be important for our um, minimal application. And as far as what it will do, uh, this is where we will uh, do some things differently. So the first thing is you want to include uh, windows.h. And this is... Um, Yeah, this is the header for majority of the kernel APIs and uh, the main one that we want from it is uh, exit process. As I mentioned in the last video, so if you haven't watched it, uh, go and check it out. I uh, will link it uh, in the video. Uh, but um, basically we want to just have a main function and we want to uh, call exit process from there. Now, this is where the funny stuff begins. So first of all, uh, if I want uh, to have a minimal executable, I cannot do this. So I mentioned in the last video as well, but basically this is convention from C. It has nothing to do with how the system actually works. Uh, in fact, if I, if I try to do it this way, uh, it will just bark at me and uh, not be happy, but uh, well, maybe I should do that as well. Okay, so let's let's start with the flags. So we have uh, these compiler and build tool reference. Uh, we have command line tools uh, and uh, compile SD program on command line. Let me find some actual nice stuff. What I want is a list of all the flags. So I guess this is what we will do. Um, MSVC compiler flags. Compiler options. Yes. So that sounds good to me. And maybe by category is uh, what we want. And I just want to go through them and we will pick out stuff that we want to use out of here. Okay, so uh, this is optimization flags 
and um, basically we want OX. Uh, so we want to have the maybe actually we want O2. We'll look at what slash gf and slash gy do, I think I know, but we, we should check. I think those are security flags, but uh, we can we can look at that. And here is a link to gf and gy. Enables, okay, so this is a string deduplication. Okay, uh, that's fine. So when we do O2, it actually uses it. And GY is function level leaking in the form of packaged function. Okay, this is more, has to do with link option. I guess uh, we do slash O2. That's good. Let's get that and say that we want O2. And the reason we want optimizations uh, enabled to maximum level is because we want to produce, remember, a minimal executable. And if we don't enable optimization, there will be a bunch of code uh, in the main part that will be just uh, moving stuff in and out of the stack and so on and so forth. But we want, we want it to be, uh, we don't want that around. Okay. Let's continue. Code generation. Um, honestly, we probably will not need any of that. I think that's uh, fine. So um, the only thing that we want to do is disable security features. Um, we will eventually want to have something like that as well. Uh, but for now, that's not interesting. And it will just, uh, just obscure the stuff that's happening. So the thing that we do is we want to say slash GS minus. So we want to disable all the security checks. And if you watched some of my episodes, I actually use this flag uh, on the Compile Explorer <clears throat> to also clean up the code. Okay. Uh, control stack checking call number of bytes uh, that local variables can cry before stack probe is in uh, no space at all between slash js and size um, I think it's fine uh, we are not going to use any uh, stack storage so we don't need to disable this I expect these to not produce any complications for us but Let's keep this in mind uh, as we move forward. Uh, fiber safety, whole problem of immunization, uh, functional linking, okay. Um, I think we don't need any of that. Um, this is as, okay, assembly listing. Yeah, I don't think we need any of it either. Preprocessor directives, we can skip that. Uh, we can probably skip all of these, although let me check. Uh, to do language extensions, PDB generation, no, no, not interested. Uh, okay. So we will need to have um, slash link. And so that's a separate thing altogether. Uh, and we'll get to, to that uh, later. And this common runtime stuff, uh, it's also w sort of important, but we will not use these flags precisely. Uh, what else do we have here? So I guess we should actually add slash TC uh, to be explicit that we want uh, behavior in C. 
mm, warnings we want uh, we all that is already there and uh, what so slash wx is treating uh, warnings as errors this is we want as well um okay and that's fine yeah and we already use std c++ latest it's weird that you use this with uh like even writing c but this is how they decided to enable latest c features as well so you know whatever a bunch of different case stuff and we are at the end so this should be fine for us let's see if we will need to add uh, any more stuff later but for now that's good and now we get to the linker options which i'll actually go to here <clears throat> and it's sort of uh the same thing as with um with the ones that we looked at because remember compilation in c is sort of split in two parts you have c compiler that produces object files uh, for each of the mm, compilation units uh, compilation units are not necessarily the same thing as uh, files uh, in fact like the way we are building right now is we only have one compilation unit and generally this is how i do my projects but uh, it's, it's a less traditional way and then uh, you have a linker that takes all of these compilation units and brings them into uh, single executables and uh, patches a lot of stuff our process again will uh, not go through this pipeline uh, we could output object files the same as c compiler does and then use linker to do this linking uh, but instead of that we will write out executables directly so uh, again kind of just cutting through the uh, historical things that are there okay um let me quickly scan through what we need here um I guess most of it is not important as you can see I already went to this uh, once so this is obviously something we need and this comes back to what I started to talk about uh, with uh, the with the main so if you look at this table over here if you have a console application then the actual function name that is uh, that the linker that will be used to figure out what is the entry point in application is main CRT startup and uh, CRT st stands for uh, C runtime I believe uh, so basically uh, as mentioned like the function main that you uh, that you would write here is not what is uh, called at the very start of the executable you're calling uh, like we start with the C runtime that then calls your thing that uh, is interpreted. So if you want to remove all of this stuff out of the out of the way and have uh, kind of a lot of control and be able to uh, deal with it ourselves, then we need to do something about it. Okay, so we can still call this thing main, by the way. So like uh, as long as we uh, pass this name to entry but i will call it something different just so that uh, you're not confused with uh, uh, with the c main so first of all that thing does not return anything and it doesn't accept anything so uh, in a sense we are just creating like a label like we do in our uh, compilation just say okay this is going to be the um, the entry point to the application and another thing is since it's a void function it cannot return the status code upon exit so we can't do this and we can't exit at all like uh, this will just uh, this will not exit by itself so we need to do this we need to say exit process and zero and i will actually try to compile it to show you the errors that will happen uh, if i do that um, so let's do build okay uh, that is not exactly what i expected to uh, see as the error i guess it doesn't like that i have this file open but that's kind of strange okay that's 
that is slightly slightly not what I was expecting. So we have build it bad. Maybe I'm not closing file uh, correctly somewhere. So that's a bit unfortunate. So let me stash the changes and try again. Um, build. Yeah, something is definitely not happy about it. Oh yeah, it's probably this thing. Yeah, because we had a file open inside the build, it couldn't actually remove it. Good, so that's fine. We can undo our stuff and uh, try to build again. So, okay, this is a lot of warnings. Let's enlarge this and see what is uh, happening. So, uh, we need to definitely disable this warning for 255 because we can't really do anything about it. It's inside of uh, Windows headers. So uh, even if we wanted to, we couldn't really fix it. Uh, so we did, uh, what's it, uh, 4255, 4255. And what is the other one is, it is not defined uh, as a preverse. Okay. So this is also inside of the Windows stuff. So we unfortunately have to disable this one as well. VD4668, that's good. Uh, let's try to build this again. Okay, great. So Linker is very unhappy with us. Uh, it doesn't know what to do about this. So let's... Um, Let's add options to, to the linker. So it couldn't find the main uh, and it was really confused. But before we add the main, <clears throat> the thing that we need to do is we don't want zero time. We want a raw executable where we uh, control everything. And the way you do that is you um, use this command, which is no default lib. Uh, it yeah. So um, I believe this will force um, force the linker to not look in C runtime to for the stuff that we uh, for for the entry point. So if we add this now, the error that we should see is that the main 30 startup is not found. Uh, but let's see. So we do link and whoops. And we then do no default leap. Okay. Let's um, try to build now. Okay, it still actually tells exactly the same story that entry point must be defined. Uh, well, let's give it the entry point and say slash entry, I think it should be like this. Uh, I need to use uh, colon, yeah. So slash entry colon function. Okay, let's try that again. A subsystem can be inferred and must be defined. So we saw that in actually in entry here, right? We basically need to say, I will use a subsystem console again, because it's just, it's less stuff to deal with. Uh, eventually we can do windows. It doesn't really matter um, which one we use, but for simplicity, it is going to be console. Okay. So let's try that again. Okay, now we get further. So it got our uh, entry point. It got the, mm, the subsystem that we want, but it complains that it has no idea what exit process is. And if you look at this, it just ignore this underscore underscore imp, whatever. It's just a part of how uh, linker mangles names. Uh, just, yeah, just ignore it. Um, the thing here is that <coughs> 
since we said no default lib, uh, we removed all the standard places that compiler looks into to figure out uh, which functions to use. And uh, we need to now explicitly uh, like tell it to look for those functions. And I believe that exit process is in kernel 32, um, but it might be in user 32. We'll see later if I'm correct or not. Uh, kernel 32 leave no such file or directory. That is strange to say the least. Um, should this be, maybe I need to provide it before everything else. I thought it doesn't really matter in which order I do it. It still isn't happy. Let's try to give it a different one that definitely exists. Huh. So I guess uh, no default leap is uh, playing tricks on us and now it doesn't really want to... to do this. Okay, what if I... let's do it first like this. Let me remove no default lib and... but keep the entry and subsystem and see what we get out of that. So yeah, it still doesn't like that we don't have exit process. Let's open file Elizer and I think it actually tells us where kernel 32 DLL, yeah, so that should be that should be the one that we want. Uh, it's very strange that it doesn't like us doing that. So let me open this thing and uh, We open this stuff and then we have import directory. Yeah, so it is definitely part of uh, exit process should be somewhere here. Yeah, it's definitely part of kernel 32 DLL. So it should be kernel 32 lib. Uh, the way that you can figure that out, by the way, is you just um, Go here and do exit process. Uh, apparently, you should do you should go to here, yeah. and then you look here and says library kernel thirty two leap. So I'm slightly confused why it doesn't really work. Uh, like it should. Maybe subsystem console is what it doesn't really like. Um, let me try to, to change that to um, Windows. Maybe that's gonna be uh, better, but I don't think it should be, should make any difference. And I should be able to just do this. I should be able to just say, okay, look up in the kernel 32. Well, apparently it is not happy and it cannot find the... Um, it cannot find it. Um, this is very, very strange. Let me quickly look if I'm not doing something entirely stupid. So let's try to put it uh, for the... Oh, maybe it should be part of the linker. No. Yes, no, yes, no. Not sure. Let's look link. Uh, linker options, linker references. So we do it like this. Uh, linker reference on the 
command line, link and arguments. Okay. Anyway, let's try to put kernel32 lib here as well and see if it is uh, fine with that. So yeah, it looks like it has to do something with um, with the way we provide uh, link options here. It's not really happy about that. And maybe it doesn't like uh, TC option. Uh, it, I'm not even sure what to think about it here. Okay, apparently it didn't like the TC option for the, for the stuff, which makes little sense to me, but you know, okay, whatever. If that's what makes you happy, that's what makes you happy. Cool. So let's recap. We have a file. That file is, uh, we define our own entry point in the application. We build it with maximum um, optimization level, or maybe there are other things that we can disable. We disable security checks. We might disable the stack checks if we need to, but I don't think we do. Um, and um, actually, let's get back to console. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. So let's now take a look at what we have. By the way, one thing, if you want to be nice to the compiler, we should ex explicitly say that. I think it should go like so. Or maybe not. I'm not sure where st std call actually uh, goes. So let's look this up. See std call, std call here. Where are you going? So it's return type, then std call. Okay. Uh, that just basically explicitly tells which uh, calling convention this function is supposed to have. And, you know, uh, if linker says it should be that way, well, let's, let's be explicit about that. Even though it will work without it. Uh, cool. So now we need to figure out if this actually works. So let's do build uh, minimal and uh, echo. I think it's like this. Yeah, so this is zero. Basically, this error level is whatever exit process gives back. Let's uh, do 42 and then we can build. And then we can run and then we can check. Okay. See, so this works. We have an executable that just calls exit process and nothing else. And again, to show you what will happen if I don't do that, uh, let's do it like this. And it's actually very interesting. I think it crashes. Uh, it doesn't actually exit correctly, uh, but yeah, see, it, it basically it crashes. If I try to run it inside the debugger, uh, we will see that the uh, debugger is really unhappy with it, with this executable. Whereas if you have exit process, everything is fine. Okay. Everything is good again, and now we can start uh, diving into this stuff. So we have this minimal executable. One thing to note here is that, as you can see, our mass spec is 640 kilobytes, this is 650, and this is three kilobytes. So, uh, and majority of these three kilobytes is actually empty space. It's just because of um, the alignment requirements in, um, in the executable, you end up with a bunch of stuff. Okay, so let's uh, do a more thorough inspection of this executable and before we start doing it in the next video. Nothing really uh, fancy here. Uh, this is all just required stuff, uh, more or less. Um, the important part is somewhere over here. Uh, I believe uh, this thing just tells that uh, it is a 
P32 plus executable and we can actually look at it uh, what was the name of it yeah P format I even have it here so this is the file that we looked at before let's scroll and we have it here so as you can see let me try to line this up a bit better so you can follow this stuff okay so here it says at location 0x3c uh, file of set of the PE signature so um, we have these three seeds, uh, the field ELF new, and uh, it has an offset C8 that is uh, specifying where the signature for PE uh, is uh, happening. Okay, well, let me zoom this as well a bit. And now we get to C, C8, uh where is where are you okay see at c8 we have pe00 which is exactly what it says here the letters p e and e followed by two null bytes uh before this you have this uh dos program that says that this program actually cannot be run in you know in dos mode uh, this is exactly what they say, this program cannot be run in DOS mode. So we could technically just take these bytes and uh, the Ray team just uh, have it somewhere in our application to have this standard program. Uh, but technically we don't need to. Uh, so uh, if we just fill all of these with zeros, except for this uh, start thing, then what is gonna happen is when you try to run it in DOS, it will just crash. Uh, but if it, since we're not running it in DOS, it's also okay, but we can also do this. So it's 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 perfectly fine. Okay. Now at the beginning of an object file or immediately after the signature of an image file, a standard cough header. So basically right after we said this uh, PE stuff, we start with a cough header. And you see we have uh, two bytes. So these size to machine two uh, for the architecture and and remember that this is lethal engine architecture, so you need to flip around these two bytes. So it is says eighty six sixty four, and if you look at the machine types here, uh, here is the one that we are targeting eighty six sixty four. Okay, so that's fine, and we can like go through each field and like see what is uh, there we will eventually do as we start doing this but i just want to show you like uh, how it looks like and this is um, here we have this uh, import table for the exit process and it says oh okay actually the exit process is inside kernel 32 dll this is uh, how it how it works uh cool yeah we can now look here uh, exactly what i said we only have one import uh, and this uh, setup just it allows us to have this base file that is much, much simpler than what we had before. So it is uh, really handy. I still want to open it in uh, file Elizer, I guess, uh, if I can figure out okay. how, uh, actually, let's just do this. I'll open, I want to open the, minimal and if we look at the sections we hopefully should see way less stuff yeah so we have way less uh sections and remember what i said about alignment so you see if you noticed all of them are 512 bytes and this is the alignment that um basically it's expected for 64-bit executables in x86 uh, in 32-bit you could uh, compact it down to be smaller but um, here uh, you sort of you need that i believe that we don't even need three sections we could probably get away with uh, two of them 
uh, but it is uh, fine like it is. Uh, now, uh, the the reason um, what we need to look at here is basically this. Remember, I mentioned in the when we're talking about format that there is this virtual address, and then there is a physical address. And physical address is the location inside of the like file on disk, and this is the location of this section uh, in memory. But this is a relative address. So wherever this thing is loaded into uh, it plus thousand, you will have uh, code plus two thousand, you will have this data, and plus three thousand, you will have this data. So this is just uh, how it works. Um, we can also look at the flags and so on. And but uh, yeah, anyhow, this is now we have a nice, nice uh, reference file that we can uh, look into. Uh, so it's used by another process, uh, thread disassemble. Yeah, it's not really happy with the disassembler, but we can use the Visual Studio. So if we do dev environment and uh, build minimal AXE. And we want to, I'm not sure if it even has any references to external files. So debug, step into new instance. Yeah. So um, here's uh, what happens. You ha have just 16 bytes over here. Uh, and we also saw that the, there are just 16 of them in the uh, file because you have to specify how, how long this is. And this is as almost as minimal as you can make it. So um, the, this is the call to exit process. And as you can see, uh, it's... Uh, yeah, it, it is pretty minimal. I'm not sure why you have sub here. Like you definitely, you technically don't need it. Uh, you might need to align the stack, but I think stack starts aligned as well. So like, uh, I'm really not sure why, why would you do this stuff? Um, but I guess, uh, I guess for some reason. Uh, ah, okay, yeah. That makes sense. This is because we are making a function call, and this is the shadow zone for the for the argument. Okay, so this is fine. Uh, we load forty two into uh, the registers. We do everywhere, and then we call, and then uh, this uh, CC. It's actually a padding. So uh, in the sense that uh, compiler adds uh, CC bytes to the end of the function so that you, if you accidentally overrun, then you end up in this thing. And this is sort of exactly what happened when I uh, removed exit process. So you end up with int three, and uh, this is a sort of, I think user interrupt or something like this. You can, we can look it up uh, what it means. But essentially uh, you're not supposed to be there more or less. Um, and if you have a debugger, the debugger will uh, will stop on this instruction, and this is something that we should add to our compiler is as well. Yeah. So here's our in three generate breakpoint trap. So basically, it's a it's a debugger endpoint, a debugger breakpoint, and uh, yeah. I said this happens. Uh, this just checks that you don't overrun the the function, and it's very nice for debugging, especially at uh, lower level. It maybe has also security implications. I'm not sure. Well, this is uh, good. We I said now we have a minimal reference uh, for the executable that we can follow and see how much uh, progress we are making, and where to start. That will be it for today, and hopefully in the next episode we can actually start 
writing out executable ourselves. Bye-bye.